Hey everybody, welcome back to Letterman Row. We are outside the horseshoe where hopefully there will be a decent number of games played this season. We still don't know exactly what uh, the schedule might look like. A lot of flexibility coming for this Ohio State season, but this is a positional preview for the Ohio State secondary, no matter how many games you play. That's Spencer Holbrook, that's Jeremy Birmingham, I am Austin Ward. It's back before all of this shut down in March and even preseason this, you know, in the preseason and talking about where this roster was going to look like. I think we got more questions about what this secondary, after losing Jeff Okuda, after losing Damon Arnett, after losing Jordan Fuller, and people, was this the is this the weak unit? I think they're. I personally believe they're going to reload and be just fine. And um, before this turns into the Cam Brown Appreciation Hour from me, uh, how much concern do you have for the Ohio State secondary as Kerry Combs returns, Burn? I mean, I, there's certainly no concern about Kerry Combs and, and what his impact will be. That's obvious. The guy has proven time and time again what his value is, but. The, yeah, you got to have questions. I mean, you know you have Sean Wade, right? That's it. And then you have a bunch of questions. Uh, <laughs> I have questions still about Sean Wade because... He, but you know what he can do, right. at least if you put him in the slot, okay? So we do have questions about Sean Wade, like what happens when you move him outside? How does he handle the Big Ten's big receivers? How does he handle Nico Collins, guys like that on the outside? But outside of him, you have Cam Brown, who we got to see a lot of a year ago. You have Seven Banks, who... There's already been talk about him like looking to leave for the NFL after this year because the the sort potential the yeah. potential here. But the reality is he needs to play football. And then in safety, that's and that that is the the glaring the flashing lights for me. Josh Proctor obviously has all the tools. We've talked about him on Letterman Row for the last two years. Like he's you know a Hall of Famer. But the reality is. He's not really made any plays yet in his Buckeye career, except for knocking out Jack Cohn at the end of the Big Ten championship game when it was game, game was over. Marcus Hooker, who who plays safety opposite Josh Proctor? Is, is Josh Proctor actually the starting safety? Like, he's been hurt. Hooker's had injuries. Like, where? The answer is yes. I have a lot of questions. If Josh Proctor is not the starting safety for the Buckeyes, then I think that they're in a world of hurt. There's. And I'd have a lot of questions about the development of that position, considering everything we've known about it and the impact that uh, Jeff Halfley had a year ago. Um, this kid is one of the best pure athletes that you've ever seen. And Spencer wrote, I think, a story about this during training camp last year when he was getting an interception in almost every single practice. Now, it, he went through some growing pains after that. He also had some physical pains and some injuries that slowed him down and his development. But if he's not out there on the field as your primary single high safety, I don't know who that would be. Nobody should be able to watch the Clemson game from the end of last season and have more motivation to to be a dominant player on this defense than Josh Proctor. Because if there's one play that just sticks out, it's Trevor Lawrence making a move, Josh Proctor being sat down, and Trevor Lawrence scoring a touchdown. That play has to just ring through his head every time he looks in the weight room, when, when, you know, whenever that whenever they're in the weight room, right. and see that score. That play just has to ring through his head. And so I think... Nobody's more motivated than Josh Proctor. He wants to be great. You think he's going to be great. If he's not the starting safety, I agree. There's some real issues there. I, I don't really have an answer for who else would play that spot. So I, I think Josh Proctor has to play, and I think he has to step up and be the guy. Not quite Jordan yeah. Fuller, because that's almost impossible expectations. But, it, but it's not impossible, because jo Josh Proctor's physical talent is so much better than Jordan Fuller's. So this is simply oh, I'm talking to, like the instinctual this is, ability. This is simply a matter of Josh Proctor wanting to dive into being a pro's pro. And rather than just being a guy who's athletic and rangy and can do these things naturally, football is not just about how athletic you are, especially when you're the last line of defense on the defense. You're the one high safety. You are responsible for a whole heck of a lot. And if you're not really buying into the things you have to do on the daily, it makes it really hard for the guys on that defense to trust you on Saturday. So the question is, is Josh Proctor taking that step? And that's that's really where the I think the story of the 2020 Buckeye defense is is written. Did, does Josh Proctor take that step? Because you know what you're going to get at the corners. You're going to get NFL caliber play out of Sean Wade, Cam Brown, Seven Banks. You're going to. The question is, does Josh Proctor allow them to stick to that one high safety that they had a year ago that changed the defense? Because if he can't play that, 
then the defense has to change. Well, and lucky for them, there was a lot of want to from these guys when they were around Jeff Halfley. And it's the exact same way when they're around Kerry Combs. There's a lot of just, you know, general want to. I, I want to be better because I'm around a guy who knows what it takes to be better. So I think having Jeff Halfley last year, a former NFL coach, and now having Kerry Combs come back from the NFL and show him, hey, this is what you have to do to play in the NFL and to play in an AFC championship game like I just coached in. That can be some motivating factor as well, not just the film from last year that says, hey, this is where I can get better. When we saw Seven Banks return. Oh, my gosh. Well, first of all, we saw him on the opening day of spring camp, and he looked like a completely different person. Yeah. Uh, we didn't get to talk to him then, but I would say that he probably put on at least 15 pounds of muscle. And then somehow when he reported in June for voluntary workouts, it looked like he had found 10 more pounds of muscle to tack on. The dude... Uh, is yoked up and he was making some plays early on in his career um, you know he was involved in the in the big punt block with the return against uh, Michigan two years ago you know he got on the field last year as you alluded to Cam Brown getting that experience this this guy seems like he's ready to make a leap he he better be I mean for Kerry Combs's defense to work it's sort of required that three cornerback rotation and you'd like to think that you have that set up with sean wade cam brown and seven banks but if, if seven doesn't make the same leap and again he's a kid that uh is a little more raw i think than uh we would have seen in the last handful of years out of ohio state defensive backs but the physical talent is there he is really uh intriguing player i've talked to people who work with nfl agents and stuff and they, they their eyes are on seven banks already they're, they're aware of him um, and again, you, you, you hit the nail on the head when he showed up, when we showed up on the first day of spring practice, it was like, damn, seven banks looks like a totally different player. <laughs> and when that happens, you start to see that little swag develop. And there's a, there's an expectation of these guys to carry on that legacy. And, and I don't think that anybody in that cornerback room, uh, takes that lightly. And I think you see that leap. There was a, a, a thing that I noticed last year where teams were challenging Damon Arnett because they knew Jeff Okuda was good, not because they, you know, he didn't even really have to. You have to, to throw it somewhere. Yeah, but he didn't even have to really prove it because they just knew that's Jeff Okuda's side. I'm going to Damon Arnett's side. I think you're going to see a little bit of that with Sean Wade this year where they're not going to challenge Sean Wade as much because it's just known how good he is. And I think that's where you see Cam Brown and Seven Banks really emerge as NFL prospects, kind of like you did with Damon Arnett last year. I think those guys are going to really step up and become those NFL prospects because they're going to have to, because they're going to get the ball thrown at them so much because teams do not want to throw to Sean Wade. I wonder if teams will test Sean Wade early because you still don't really know. His versatility is what made him so valuable to Ohio State that he could line up and cover anybody in the slot and he could hit. I remember two years ago at this time and even into the season, Berm, people were saying, should, should Sean Wade be at safety? Right. Should that be his spot? That's how dynamic and versatile he is. So it, it's rare that you would see somebody who could play safety and also be the primary lockdown outside corner. And I have a lot of confidence that Sean Wade can do that. But I think NFL scouts want to see that, which is why he came back. And Spencer yeah. and I know that from going down there. But also, uh, how much faith do opponents have that he can be that? Yeah, I, I mean, think he's going to get balls thrown his way. you got to show it. I mean, it's not just about, okay, he plays cornerback at Ohio State. He's going to be this. The reality of the situation is without Chase Young, with a, a, a new defensive line set up with no Devon Hamilton, no B.B. Landers, those guys who are collapsing pockets all the time, we don't know. There's there's a chance that the Ohio State secondary is going to have to cover for a little bit longer this year than they have in recent years. <laughs> and so you start to wonder, like, how long can those guys hold up? What, what, what are they doing there? So how the defense changes, I think, is very important. But Sean Wade has shown NFL scouts already what he's able to do. He's a big physical guy, but playing the outside is different and you got to show it. But again, and this is what we talked about with the linebackers, playing in the Big Ten only, right now, I mean, the, the best passing offense in the Big Ten other than Ohio State is probably Minnesota, and they're not going to have to play them until the Big Ten championship game if they get there. We're, we're, you're going to, you have questions in, at Michigan Whoa. at quarterback. I mean, you don't know who's, I mean, yeah. You have questions but, at Purdue at quarterback. You, you, I'm sure there's good receivers at Purdue, but you're not, they're not on the schedule right now either. So you, you kind of have a setup in, a, in, a, in the Big Ten with the, big, with the Buckeyes conference schedule where you're not really playing Minnesota or Purdue, the teams that would really challenge you on the outside. Um, and, you know, you wait and see what happens with Dylan McCaffrey and Joe Milton in Michigan. But, I mean, if we're talking preview. Spoiler alert, I think we know what's going to happen there. If, if we're talking 
uh, you know, previewing the season. Now we have to be realistic and look at the schedule and say, it, it, this is maybe just gearing up towards what do the Buckeyes have to do to get ready for Trevor Lawrence? What? And that's that's. I think you bring up a great point. What what quarterback in the Big Ten scares the secondary? I think that's the main question. The biggest question I have for the secondary because we know it's going to be talented. That yeah. that's not even a question. We know that Sean Wade is probably going to be a first round pick. So everything else kind of figures itself out in this thing, and then it's like, okay, which quarterback scares you? Does Sean Clifford scare you? The answer is probably no. I mean, it, does Adrian Martinez scare you? I the answer Sh should be absolutely no. Well, Sean Clifford's a, a good young quarterback, but uh, who's on the outside now at Penn State? Uh, where you know, how do you, how does their offense change? The, are they going to go run heavy with Journey Brown and 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 uh, um, you know the other running backs they have, whose names are escaping <laughs> me right now? And Devin Ford, guys like that. So, I just think we have to look at it from the the macro and say, how does this schedule? set up for this secondary, and I think it's actually a pretty big positive for Ohio State. Their first game will be against Rutgers. Maybe. Breaking down Penn State's offense was not the way I thought this position preview was going to go. Yeah. <laughs> but we talk, we're trying to talk about the Ohio Let's State Let's talk secondary. about Cameron Brown. I would – how much time you got? I don't know. As long as you Cam want. Cam Brown is one of the fastest, most talented players on this roster. Why he gets no credit uh, when we have these – debates about the weakness of the secondary. I think, in my mind, when I went this spring, you guys disagreed with me, and that's certainly fine. We don't know exactly. We're not the X's and O's experts. I thought Seven Banks would be in the slot playing the Sean Wade role. He's just, you know, he's a little bit bigger physically, and Cam has that a little experience playing on the outside from last year. Uh, he's got a little bit better speed than Seven Banks, uh, based on what I've been told. We haven't got to see them run a straight line head to head, but. I feel like he is a more natural corner, which is weird because that's not really what he's done throughout yeah, his whole career. I, I agree, though. I think he goes in, to what Spencer was saying, who's going to be in that Damon Arnett role and get a bunch of balls thrown their way. Cam Brown has good ball skills. He's got good speed, and he's as confident as they come. Yeah, I, I look for he, he can be Damon Arnett. I think he's more of your Denzel Ward type corner down the road. Um, you know, he's he's not the six what six foot one, six two guy. He's more in like five eleven, six foot range, but he is extremely aggressive he's he's very fast he's got good hips there's a lot to like about cam brown and i you guys have busted my chops about this repeatedly i don't think that people should forget about marcus williamson when it comes to playing the slot marcus williamson is a hard-nosed dude like that is a kid that likes to hit people he, he isn't as lengthy he's not as as long a guy as the buckeyes traditionally recruit but it was Kerry Combs who recruited him as the cornerback in the same class with Jeff Okuda, with Sean Wade, with Kendall Sheffield. I mean, it was the same guy. So he he was somebody that Kerry Combs said, that's who I want. And I, I think it's exciting to see what how he develops. And then can Kerry Combs finally be the guy to pull it out of Tyreek Johnson? We, we went 10 minutes into a preview show without talking about a five-star on the roster. That's well tells you what you need to know about what Tyreek Johnson's career has been so far. But it tells you... You know, Kerry Coleman's recruited him. Can he, like you said, Berm, can he finally get that, get that out of him, that potential? Yeah. He'd be another candidate to put there in the slot. We'll see how this all Well, he can play safety. I mean, he's a guy that, at his size, if you're looking for, well, let's go way back here. We'll go <laughs> get in the way back machine. We're talking about who else could play back there in the safety if Josh Proctor isn't the guy for whatever reason, or Marcus Hooker uh, has injury issues or whatever. His size and, and style may be better suited to play safety, but he's never wanted to do it. So maybe Kerry Combs is the guy that can pull that out of him. I, I don't know. And we didn't even talk about the young guys, that's the, the Cavazos well, and Warren Watts. Part, but we also left out two guys who, um, when Spencer and I talked to Jordan Fuller the last time in Indianapolis in February, the name that he brought up was Bryson Shaw, that that guy was going to be uh, a potential star down the road. Now, he's only been on special teams and – we haven't seen a whole lot. We've seen even less of Ronnie Hickman, yeah. who missed all of last year with injury. Those guys were pretty highly recruited, as everybody on this Ohio State roster is. So there's a lot, really, for Ohio State yeah. and Kerry Combs to sort out. The last lacrosse player turned out pretty good. Oh, boy. We had to drop oh, that. No. He also played dodgeball. Plus, is Shaw going to like move up and become a linebacker? He could be. Tight end and defense. He could. End? That would be a great story. Yeah. I, one of a kind. Um, this really, really got away from me again. He spins away. Positional preview on the Ohio State Secondary is brought to you by Byers Auto. Uh, we're still hoping for the maximum amount of games in this building right behind me. 
I will cover it all year, no matter what. That's Spencer Holbrook. That's Jeremy Birmingham. I'm Austin Ward for Letterman Row. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Subscribe below to get the latest videos from Letterman Row. We've got Letterman Live. We've got the practice report. We got rapid reaction. Hey, and you know we got Buck IQ with Zach Bourne. For sure. We got recruiting breakdowns with Berm. We got whatever you need. Ohio State football and Ohio State athletics. We've got you covered here at Letterman Row.